In this slide, we will be talking about the structure and function of the nephron. As I mentioned earlier, a nephron is the basic structural and functional unit of the kidney. It is responsible for filtering blood and producing urine. Each kidney contains millions of nephrons, and their collective activity enables the kidneys to perform their essential functions. Uh, a nephron consists of several components. First off is the renal corpuscle. The renal corpuscle is basically the initial part of the nephron consisting of the glomerulus and the Bowman's capsule. This part here is called the, uh, the renal corpuscle, which is basically, it, it, uh, it, it consists of the glomerulus or the capillaries and the Bowman's capsule. The glomerulus is a network of tiny blood vessels or capillaries that receives blood supply from the afferent arteriole. The high pressure within the glomerulus allows for filtration of blood. The Bowman's capsule surrounds the glomerulus and collects the filter that is produced during the filtration process. After the Bowman's capsule comes the proximal convoluted tubule. This segment of the tubule is the region where most of the reabsorption happens. The reabsorption is a process in which nutrients such as glucose, amino acids, water will be reabsorbed from the filter back into the blood, preventing it from being excreted in the urine. Because if these nutrients are excreted in the urine, the body will dehydrate rapidly and um, this could lead to several uh, medical complications. So the proximal from the Bowman's capsule, the filtrate enters the proximal convoluted tubule. The proximal convoluted tubule is a highly coiled tubular structure where the reabsorption of water, glucose, amino acids, salts, and other important substances occurs. It plays a crucial role in reabsorbing valuable components back into the bloodstream. And then comes the loop of Henle. The loop of Henle is divided into two parts. The descending loop of Henle and the ascending loop of Henle. Now, the descending loop of Henle is permeable to water. It allows for the reabsorption of water to be reabsorbed back into the blood, preventing it from being excreted in the urine, causing dehydration. And the ascending loop of Henle is responsible for the reabsorption of sodium and chloride ions. The loop of Henle is a U-shaped segment that extends from the proximal convoluted tubule. It consists of a descending limb and an ascending limb. The loop of Henle plays a vital role in the concentration and reabsorption of water and sodium. The descending limb allows water to pass out of the tubule, while the ascending limb allows the reabsorption of sodium ions. The distal convoluted tubule. After the loop of Henle, the filtrate enters the distal convoluted tubule. The distal convoluted tubule is responsible for further reabsorption and secretion processes. It regulates the concentration of ions such as sodium, potassium, and hydrogen ions and helps to maintain the pH balance of the body. Finally, we have is the collecting duct. The collecting duct basically receives the filtrate from multiple nephrons. It carries the, this is the collecting duct, this part here. It basically receives the urine from various multiple uh, nephrons. It carries the process filtered or the urine through the medulla of the kidney, allowing for the final adjustment of water and electrolyte reabsorption. The collecting ducts ultimately converge to form larger ducts that empty into the renal pelvis. Now from the renal pelvis, the urine will then enter the, uh, the ureter and then will be stored in the urinary bladder to be excreted.